So this uh, give her a warm welcome. Thank you, Madam uh, Chua, for being here today. Welcome to Singapore. Um, of course, when the media reported that, oh, the president granted clemency and, you know, some of the reports tell you about families who are so grateful to the president, all of them are wrong. All of them are wrong because it is not the president who has been granting all these clemencies. It is the cabinet. The very same cabinet that wants to kill 18-year-old, 19-year-old boys and girls for drug trafficking. Does it make sense to you? A cabinet, a legislature that constructs the Misuse of Drugs Act such that there's a whole host of presumptions, okay? At the end of which, if you are found guilty, you die. Full stop. You don't get 20 years, you don't get life imprisonment, you don't get all that. You die. And it is the same people who constructed this law that now has the final say of clemency. Like I said several times before, it just makes no example in the National Library Archives and you read up past press reports. It is quite clear to an ordinary citizen, to an ordinary uh, reader, that the power actually lies with the president. But if you go back now and uh, after Justice Stephen Chong's judgment, if you go back now and read all these reports, they make no sense to you. I've read some of them, you know. And it makes no sense if the power lies with the cabinet. Right? For example, President Wee came away as pardoned three people. And he has been held up as the people's president. People have written to him to thank him personally for, for granting the clemencies. But now we know that it's all not true. He didn't do anything at all. Now, uh, of course, I would like to again thank uh, uh, Dr. Chua Sun Bui from the constituency of uh, Tawa from Sabah, who have taken such a bold and keen interest in Yong's case. Not to forget the fact that Yong comes from the place of Sandakan in Sabah. And since uh, um, I have gone to Sabah and there was a nationwide campaign in Sabah in three days and the good news is that she comes with 43,000 petitions, not online petitions, but street petitions. This is the highest record-breaking petitions in the history of Malaysia. I mean, this is, we are talking about just East Malaysia. And uh, Chawing comes with uh, 27,000 petitions from West Malaysia. Together uh, with the online petitions and all that, I understand that uh, it is 92,000, is it? We have 92,000 petitions from Malaysia. The thing is that, despite the fact that they, the courts have said that it's the cabinet that makes the ultimate decision, where do we actually send this 92,000 petitions? It is the president. Now the next question then would be, where in the law does it say that all the 92,000 petitions are going to be considered by the cabinet? Is there a procedure laid out that the president has to actually send, or courier for that matter, send it to the cabinet for cabinet to look at all these petitions? Is there a procedure? There is no procedure at all. That is not in the constitution. What is in the constitution is this. The President will cause the reports of the Attorney General to be sent to the public, to the Cabinet. The President, look at Article 22 of the Constitution, the President will cause the reports to be sent to Cabinet. Why must the President, it seems to be the person there directing all these things, send? The Law Minister compared, he says, Malaysia, Singapore and UK. He went and commented and said that Singapore system is compared to, U compared to UK, Australia and Malaysia. Does Malaysia, that UK and Australia have death penalty? No. Don't compare apples to oranges. You know, you have to compare apple to apple. England is where the examples that they are drawing from. The Queen of England had devolved the powers to the Home Secretary, to the cashier. In Malaysia, who has the ultimate discretion? The Yang Di Pertuan Agong of Malaysia. 
who decides the pardon process pardon uh, board pardon board and pardon board interviews isn't it yeah they interview the convicts look at how an appropriate thing that malaysia has already come out with i'm not trying to create confusion here okay some people say this is how it should be but this is not what in singapore is maybe in malaysia you have to get this but that's not the point here of course malaysia has a better system now why i'm saying this why the president should is is understood to have this as a constitutional doctrine like even what mr walter won says aside from the constitution the spirit of the constitution is not just the words may and all that but it's also how the tradition the 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 role of the president um uh, is 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 taken no what here we are talking about clemency powers of the president why even call it power when you don't even have you say the president has no discretion why even use the word power it's understood but if you have no discretion you won't even talk about powers in the first place presidential clemency powers and then no powers <laughs> what is that okay now not a single clemency in the last 11 years and we also hear from mr shanmugam and also the courts that oh is a government's hardline policy precisely the reason why cabinet and politicians cannot decide clemency process because your decisions are influenced by policy and not mercy because you come there you say it's a hardline policy i sit down here you take the clemency petition and what do you decide die even before clemency petition presented already he says die that is why we have rushed to the court and your friends lives are at stake here it is not a simple matter the president scepter i would say scepter of authority we will ask the president very humbly in this petition as you would have seen to petition the president what you are doing today is to petition the president under article 100 of the constitution to convene a constitutional court why is it important because it is an issue of importance of public importance it is an issue of importance because it is the president's powers have been taken away by the courts declared by the courts and cabinet has usurped those powers and long we go the elected president when he convenes a constitutional court he uses the state's resources he has immense amount of resource and you have best experts in the world to come before the constitutional tribunal to deliberate the president 11 years this has happened and now we know this has come out in the open so it's important that the president convenes a constitutional court and you tell it it's quite scary how our rights are being taken away from us and i just felt that you know the more people uh, gandhi once said that if a man is in if a man is in a minority of one and yet he is right that can build on it you know he can build on it so i think the more people that come here and show the country that there's no reason to be afraid that the government can't put 80 90 100 people in jail you know and that it is up to us to decide what we want of our leaders rather than for our leaders to tell us uh, what they want of us because now uh, ravi is right that um, when you have this system a very drastic system which places a lot of trust on the establishment and you deprive a single man uh, the head of state or the discretion or mercy basically it becomes a police state in that sense I means nobody have discretion when you install a system that we are supposed to be totally trust trustful to be trusted the whole as establishment have to be really trusted but human being human were tends to be mistake so i think in in that sense i think um check it yeah this is one of the reasons uh, i make the trip down because i'm very concerned as well as in uh, the more than 100 and uh, more than 90000 signatures where do we where do we send it to so um, that's the reason why i'm here uh, uh, today um of course i'm here also to send in the petition so how's the support like for the free con case back in sabah malaysia uh in fact uh, it wasn't much uh, publicity before mr ravi visit in july so after his visit to the parliament so we thought that the, it is better to do some uh, personal touch in sabah so we arranged organized to start in uh, sandakan where the birthplace was and the response was very very encouraging 
very, very warm. Uh, in a way, that it is good that um, this Sikong comes from Sabah, comes from Sandakan, so he's a boy from Sabah, and that one makes it more personal for us, no matter what the excuse is. Yeah, whether you come from poor, you are pregnant, lady, um, abandoned uh, housewife or whatever, but we hope that through We Kong story, don't walk along that path again. Yeah, we hope that because we feel that through the process of the petition and all that, there are still a lot of people who are willing to come up and help the uh, unfortunate.